Another commonly tested Punnett square is the dihybrid cross. And this is where you're looking at the inheritance pattern of two different genes that are being transmitted from parents to their offspring. So essentially we have a situation where we're looking at two different genes being passed on and what are the possible arrangements that can occur? What are the possible outcomes in the offspring? And so once again, what we'll do is we'll use uh, Mendel's peas as an example. Uh, the capital G is the green P and that's the dominant color and the lowercase is a yellow P. And then the capital R refers to the texture. It's a round P, whereas the lowercase r is a wrinkled P. And so the question here, and uh, again, we'll keep it simple and show the versatility of the dihybrid cross. We have two parents, each of whom is heterozygous for P color and for texture. And so what this means is the they're heterozygous for the color, so they got one capital G and one lowercase g. This occurs in both parents. And they have one capital R and a lowercase r for texture. So these parents, because of the dominant nature of the capital letters, they're both going to be green and round P plants. Both of those parents are. And, but they can pass on different alleles to their offspring. And so with the dihybrid cross, we're looking at them passing down two separate alleles. And this is where the independent assortment comes up a little bit. Because th we assume that if they pass on the capital G, that means they're no more or less likely to pass down a capital or lowercase r. It's completely independent of each other. Similarly, if a parent passes on a lowercase g, that doesn't make that parent more likely to pass on a lowercase or uppercase r. There's still a 50-50 chance when it passes on the lowercase g of it passing on either the capital or lowercase. And so with that in mind, and keeping in mind that each parent will be passing on one of their g's and one of their R's, we can now assemble this dihybrid cross, the Punnett square, with all of these variations. So let's just say this is the mother. The mother can pass on capital G and capital R, capital G and lowercase r, lowercase g and capital R, or lowercase g and R. And these all occur with equal frequency. And same thing with the father's alleles that are being passed on. And so then you'll just go through this chart and uh, draw this square here. And uh, what I did is I filled in all of the combinations that will occur and did red to represent a homozygous recessive because that's the recessive phenotype. It has to be homozygous in order for that recessive phenotype to appear. And so notice that any of these combos is as equal as the next. You're just as likely to have alleles passed down that end up in this box versus alleles that end up in this box. Other ones, uh, that's just as likely as having these. There's a uh, one out of 16 chance of ending up in any of these boxes. But remember that that's a genotype frequency. This is not a phenotype frequency. And what you'll end up seeing is that with a dihybrid cross like this, if both parents are heterozygotes, meaning they have one of the dominant and one of the recessive allele, then what you'll end up with is a 9-3-3-1 ratio of phenotypes. And this is one that's worth recognizing because this is something you'll see a lot, the 9 to 3 three to three to one ratio, meaning that nine of them are going to be double dominant. Three of them will be, let's say, dominant color, but recessive texture. So dominant color, recessive texture. Three will be recessive color and dominant texture. And then one of them, right down here, will be recessive color and texture. So it will be yellow wrinkled peas. And that will occur one out of every 16 times. So this is uh, recessive both. 
And notice here we're looking at the phenotypes, not the genotypes. This doesn't distinguish, for example, between something that is homozygous dominant for both versus something that is homozygous dominant for color, but heterozygous for the texture, because ultimately the phenotype will be the same. And so you see this nine to three to three to one ratio of phenotypes when you're dealing with a dye hybrid cross and both parents being heterozygotes for a traditional uh, dominance and recessiveness pattern. But the dye hybrid cross works a lot like your typical Punnett square. It just has a little bit more variation. One other thing that we'll probably get to in a separate video, but we, which we'll touch on right now, is we can also look at the likelihoods of passing on the different phenotypes. For example, we know that there, from our, our simple four-part Punnett square, we know that there's a three to one chance of the dominant phenotype being expressed. So that means there will be three times as many g green peas as there are yellow peas. So we're looking at three to one of green versus yellow. And we know that there are uh, similarly, if both parents are heterozygotes, there's a three to one odds of round uh, versus, and I should draw that as a colon here, versus wrinkled phenotype. And the nice thing is with a Punnett square like this, and this is the most typical example where both parents are heterozygotes because it tests your a more detailed understanding. If you're wondering what are, the, what are the chances that they'll be both green and round, you simply multiply those likelihoods. So it's a three to one, so it's got three chances to be green and three chances to be round. So you're looking at three times three, nine times are green and round. We have uh, green, let's say green and wrinkled, we have a three to one chance of being green. So it's got three chances of being green, but only one of wrinkled. So it's going to be three times one, three green and wrinkled. Uh, let's look at yellow and round. This is a one in four chance, and this is a, you have three chances at this. So again, it's one times three. And so you still have three that are going to be yellow and round, and those are the ones that are, their phenotype has one dominant type and the other is a recessive type. And then we have one shot at it being yellow and one shot at it being wrinkled. So it's a one yellow and wrinkled. And this is important because you're not always going to have the heterozygous type that's um, where both parents are heterozygous. It's not always going to be a nine to three to three to one. It could be something different. So let's just pose an example here where uh, let's say that one of the parents was uh, G, G like that and the other parent was both recessive. If we were to draw the Punnett square for that, we'd end up with the odds being one to one of capital G, lowercase g, and lowercase g, lowercase g. So there'd be a 50% chance of it being yellow versus it being green. And so then rather than looking at a three to one ratio and multiplying those, we would use a one to one ratio and multiply those. So we'll have a separate video discussing probabilities with Punnett squares so that you can handle all of the different dihybrid crosses that can show up. Homozygotes being bred with homozygotes, homozygotes being bred with heterozygotes, and all the different traits that show up. But recognize first that it's very possible just by looking at these mathematical relationships for one trait. For example, you know it's a three to one likelihood of green versus yellow, and that it's a three to one likelihood of round versus wrinkled in this case that you can use mathematical relationships and multiply those odds together in order to figure out what the overall distribution will be. The most important one, I think, is to grasp this nine to three to three to one ratio, and then you can apply it differently in different situations where the parents don't neatly fit in 
to this motif of being heterozygous for all the traits available.